I've been using this PC for about three years now. The building process was actually one of the first videos on this channel, and <laughs> there's a reason why that video is no longer available. I simply didn't know what I was doing. It was my first build, and only the second or third time I ever even messed with a PC before. I'd heard that building a PC these days is easy, and I'm lazy, so I didn't bother with any of that research nonsense. Long story short, I ordered a bunch of incompatible parts, ended up with a cheap micro ATX motherboard that doesn't have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi capability, and it only supports 16 gigs of RAM. My 1050 Ti graphics card was already three years old, I reused my Intel Core i7-6100T CPU for my previous computer, which was then four years old, and I didn't bother buying a case, so I used this old HP Pavilion one my parents were going to get rid of anyway. I made it work in the end, but I've never been super happy with it. Well, would you believe that in late 2022, a PC using a now 7-year-old CPU and 6-year-old GPU isn't exactly cutting it anymore? Oh, it'll run most games I throw at it fine enough, some surprisingly well. I can play Apex Legends at about mid-settings and still hit 60fps. I don't play many AAA games on PC anyway, that's what the PS5 and Switch are for. No, the real problem is when it comes to editing. Grammarly chugs at a snail's pace whenever I simply delete a word, and opening LibreOffice makes my computer sound like a jet engine. Oh, but also video editing is a problem too, yeah. I've reached the point where I can barely edit videos anymore. 1080p videos are a challenge, 2K is borderline impossible, and 4K is totally out of the question. Video playback is slow even if I bump the preview resolution all the way down, any video editor I use takes ages to load a project, even with an SSD. Performing basic functions take a few seconds to register, and exporting... Ugh. That Asian grocery store video I made? 2K, 60fps, 44 minutes long, and it took me 28 hours to export. Yes, you heard that right. 28 hours. The Gunpla building video is only 1080p 30fps because I didn't want to waste another day and a half of my life. And even then, that 57 minute video took about 15 hours to export. After 6 years of making videos, I dread to think of all the time I've wasted having my computer do nothing but export videos all day. Those times are absurd, and I just can't take it anymore. I spend more time editing and exporting videos than in any other part of the video making process, and it's a big reason why I don't make that many videos anymore. So it's time that I finally build a new PC from the ground up. No more recycling parts, no more guessing, no more shoestring budget. I know a lot more about how computers work and how to build a good one now than I did three years ago when I built this. And I've watched countless tutorials and read tips online. Big thanks to PC Parts Picker, by the way, their built-in compatibility checker, trustworthy user reviews, and build build guide? Price guide made this process fairly straightforward and headache-free. Not sponsored or anything. A couple of things before we get started, though. First, I have a bigger budget to work with than I did the last time I built a PC, but it's not infinite. This will not be a top-spec supercomputer. I'm aiming for a high mid-range build here. Um, I'm... I timed this so I can take advantage of Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales, but that kind of cost me in the end because there weren't that many deals, and with Christmas around the corner, I ended up blowing a massive hole in my savings anyway. Oops. <laughs> Second, this is not a game- well, this isn't, but what I'm going to build is not a gaming PC. Sure, I'll play the occasional game on it, but I do most of my gaming on PS5 and Switch, like I said. This is a video editing PC, and it has different requirements than a gaming PC will. Uh, it needs more RAM and a higher core count than you need for a gaming build, for example. So just keep that in mind as you watch me go over this parts list. Have some mercy, please. Starting with the brains of the computer, the CPU. I've always used Intel, and I never had a problem with them, so I stuck with them this time around, too. Given my budget, I quickly narrowed it down to either the i7-12700K or the i9-12900K. I ended up going with the i7-12... <laughs> All these numbers are really hard to say. i7-1200... No i7-12700K, that's it. Um, 
for a couple of reasons. While it's technically not as good as the i9, it's only slightly not as good. Going from the i9 to the i7 wouldn't be that much of an upgrade, and the i7 was about $130 cheaper at $370 versus $500. That may not sound like much of a difference in the world of building a PC, but when I look at the overall performance, I just didn't think it was worth the extra cost. The i7 12700K is a 12 core 20 thread Gen 4 CPU running at 3.6 gigahertz. It's not the best choice in the world, but again, I'm limited by my budget here. This should be fast enough for editing 2K and even 4K YouTube videos. I'm not exactly making Hollywood films here. For reference, my current CPU is a i7-6700T, which is 4-core 8-thread Gen 3 running at 2.8GHz. It was first released in September 2015, making it older than Rock Band 4, and only a couple of weeks newer than Undertale. Yeah, it's pretty old. I went with the Be Quiet Pure Rock 2 because I've heard a lot of good things about it, and I am very interested in making the PC as quiet as possible since it's so close to where I record voiceovers. I'm actually going all in with Be Quiet, at least as much as I can. For the power supply, I picked up a 600 watt semi-modular Pure Power 11. In hindsight, I kind of wish I went for the 700 watt, but according to PC Parts Picker, the final build only pulls about 500 watts, and I didn't want to spend a bunch of money on a bunch of watts I won't use. Also from Be Quiet are the case fans. In this <laughs> case, it's three Silent Wing 140mm bad boys I got from eBay for a steal. Again, I've never really used case fans, except for whatever came with the secondhand cases I've used before, because my past PCs never really needed any more than that. The case I got accepts three fans in the front, one in the back, and one up top, though the one in the back can only be 120 millimeters. Okay, so now it's time for the part that I'm least looking forward to, the graphics card. This is a video editing PC, and believe it or not, GPUs don't really matter all that much when editing videos. They're nice for fast video playback, but a good CPU and fast RAM are far more important. So when I started planning this build, I wasn't going to buy a new car at all. Right now I have an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti, I think it's from MSI if I remember correctly, but I don't care enough to double check. Anyway, believe it or not, it still gets the job done despite being released in October 2016, making it as old as Gears of War 4 and PlayStation VR. But I was gonna wait until next year, re-save up some money, and buy something maybe top of the line then, maybe look into Intel's ARC range, who knows. So this is the GTX 2060 KO by EVGA. Um, why did I buy this? I don't know. Seriously, I bought this over a month ago now, and I cannot remember why I changed my mind and bought this. But it gets worse, don't worry. I, um, I bought this from eBay used, from a seller who was selling a bunch of graphics cards, meaning they probably use this for Bitcoin mining. Um, I'm not proud of myself, I don't know why I did this. The 1050 Ti desperately needs an upgrade, I know that, but it's working fine enough for now. I could have waited on an upgrade and used the $200 I spent on this on the motherboard or RAM, but no, I bought this card instead, and um, we'll see the consequences on this soon enough. As far as I can tell, motherboards don't really matter all that much. You need one with the right slots and ports and such, of course, but as far as I can tell in my research, a $200 board from Asus, yes, I know it's pronounced Asus, isn't really any different from a $700 board from MSI, save for a few minor differences. So I got the MSI Mag B660, I guess that's how you say that, Tomahawk, a full-sized ATX board with support for DDR4, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and no RGB lights in sight. And right away, we see the consequences of that graphics card purchase pop up. After spending the $200 I didn't originally budget for, I had to wait two additional weeks to get my next paycheck to buy more parts. And guess what? By the time I got the money, this motherboard was sold out pretty much everywhere. It's now back on sale, but I was tired of waiting, so I made another change to the original parts list. Instead, I went with the Gigabyte B660 Aorus Master? which, as far as I can tell, is pretty much exactly the same except $10 cheaper and 
Uh, is caked in RGB lighting nonsense. That graphics card ain't done with me yet either. After ordering the Gigabyte B660 on Amazon and waiting a week, they still hadn't shipped it yet. I bought it directly from Amazon, not a third party seller, so I cancelled it and reordered it on Newegg. Where it's inexplicably $10 more expensive. Oh, but it gets worse, don't worry. That CPU cooler I mentioned earlier? Yeah, I bought that from Amazon too, only this was a third party seller, and guess what? They hadn't shipped theirs yet either. The Amazon page says it's been shipped, but taking the tracking code to UPS shows that they've only created the label. UPS hasn't received the package yet, so I can't just cancel that order. When I try to contact the seller through Amazon, I get a chatbot telling me to wait until December 23rd to contact them again. Arriving December 14th, huh, UPS? That's interesting, considering they hadn't shipped it yet. RAM is very important to video editing, both in speed and size. I didn't go totally crazy because something ridiculous like 128 gigs wasn't in the budget, but I went much higher than what I've got now. For reference, I'm currently running two crucial 8 gigabyte DDR2133 sticks. Yeah, not great. I'll replace those with these beauties right here. G-scale rip jaws, is that a V or a 5? V5, whatever, 64 gig. 232 gig sticks, DDR4 3600. Not top of the line, but they're pretty close. The memory was actually difficult for me to decide. Right now I have a Samsung 860 EVO 1 terabyte SATA SSD. It's my first SSD and I love it more than most of my family. I also have two very old Seagate HDDs that rattle like a couple of maracas in a washing machine rolling down a hill. I've never tried an MVME M.2 SSD before, and I know those are faster than SATA connections. So I went with the Samsung 970 EVO Plus, and I'm really annoyed that I bought this now. I didn't know this at the time, but I bought it literally a week before they released the 990, which means the 980 is now on sale for the exact same price I bought this for. It's not that big of a difference between the two, but it's still kind of annoying. Not annoying enough to get a refund and buy the 980 instead, but still annoying. I'm gonna keep saying the word annoying. Finally, the case. Like I said at the start of this video, I never bothered buying a case before, I just used this old HP Pavilion P7-1414. 1414? 1414? This released in September 2012 and originally released with Windows 7. For reference, that was the same year Borderlands 2, Telltale's The Walking Dead, Dishonored, Far Cry 3, Journey, XCOM, Enemy Unknown, Persona 4 Golden, and Sleeping Dogs were all released. Holy shit, what a great year. And Katawa Shoujo 2? Oh, baby! Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Um... Um, I'll be using this Corsair 4000D Airflow. It should be big enough for all the parts I've got, and I love how it's all about keeping those parts cool. It's even got built-in dust filters and support for mounting your GPU vertically, which I might look into doing. It's also got a window on the side, but like I said, I don't really care about how it looks, so whatever. This is something I wasn't anticipating on getting, but I got such a great deal on it, I just couldn't pass it up. So my current internet setup is not great right now. You don't need to go into specifics, but it's it's pretty slow and expensive. So I've been thinking for a while about how to upgrade it and get something better. And then this stumbled along. This stumbled along. I stumbled, a, whatever, doesn't matter. Oh, I cut the package, nice. It is T-Mobile's 5G home internet. Now they were running a promotion on this. The other day, lifetime $25 a month, as long as you already have one of their lines, or if you get one of their phone lines. Um, I was already a T-Mobile customer, so I mean $25 a month, I couldn't really pass that up. I've, I've been interested in like home 5G internet for a while now, and man, I really did cut that, didn't I? This isn't like blazingly fast or anything like that, but from the speed tests I've run, this should actually be faster than what I currently am using. So I'm pretty excited to see how well it does. Now, unlike all the other stuff, which I'm waiting to set up until I get everything done, I am going to go ahead and set this up now, and then we'll talk about how it's doing in like a later part or something. But um, yeah, just wanted to add this on as kind of an addendum that I will be using 5G wireless, uh, 5G internet gateway, a 5 home G... T-Mobile 
home internet G mobile suit Gundam for the new PC builds. So pretty much everything is being replaced. The only thing that's staying are the keyboard, uh, my speakers, there are a couple of Logitech Z130s that I've used for years now and they sound good enough, uh, and my monitors. One is a Dell 27 inch 1080p 144Hz beast that they unfortunately no longer make, and the other is a Samsung S22 E310 that I found at Goodwill for 15 bucks. It's also only 1080p and it has really bad ghosting, but it works. Certainly better than the 960p monitor that I was using a while ago. Uh, so that was me picking the parts and trying to explain my rationale. As with any build, the plane didn't go quite according to plan. Um, it's been pretty frustrating, honestly. The shipping issues, buying a used graphics card that I didn't need, the lack of Black Friday sales, and my continued second guessing over that power supply all mean that the budget is over, that the project is over budget and is massively off schedule. But it is what it is. Um, I've got most of the parts now, including the motherboard. All I'm missing is the CPU fan, and honestly, I'm probably going to order another one off Newegg and hope that I can get my money back from Amazon. Two weeks later. All those parts finally came in, and I got to work building this beast of a boy. Well, it's not that much of a beast, but compared to my old PC, it really is. So what do you say we skip all this waffle and get straight to building this thing, shall we? I built it like two weeks ago now. The first thing I did was put the case fans in the case. Actually, the first thing I did was thoroughly dust and vacuum my room to make sure there was as little dust as possible floating around before I started, but nobody cares. I was thinking that I'd get the case ready ahead of time, so when I was done putting the motherboard together, I could just drop it in and go. But then I got the idea that it'd be easier to put the motherboard and everything else in first, and then the power supply, so I didn't have all those cables in the way when trying to drop it in. In the end, I don't think it really mattered, because this case has some pretty good built-in cable management solutions anyway. This part of the process proved to be one of the trickiest parts, funny enough. I first removed the 120mm fan in the front that came with this case. It's a Corsair 4000D Airflow. With that out of the way, I went to install the first of my 340mm Be Quiet fans when I realized a couple of things. I love this case, but the slots for installing the fans aren't great. You screw them into these like large channels cut out of the case and the fans are just held in there with the head of the screw. There's no like real screw holes to put them in. More than once I put so much pressure on the screw when I was screwing in that it actually went through that channel and thus didn't secure the fan. So what I did was I put these rubber washers that came with the fans between the screw and that little channel and that gave the screw a little more to hold on to and Maybe it'll reduce the rattling noise, but I'm not sure. I also made sure to install the fans in the correct orientation, the two in the front drawing air in, and the one on top blowing air out. This top fan might have been a mistake though, and you'll see what I mean later, but I did leave the rear 120mm fan that came with the case in place. Also, yes, let's acknowledge the elephant in the room here. Um, me, because, uh, I realized upon seeing this footage that I am indeed the size of an elephant. I knew I gained a fair bit of weight in 2022, but seeing it on camera like this, yeah, I need to hit the gym. Anyway, on to the motherboard. God, I am fat. Um, <clears throat> uh, the first thing we need to build our desktop is a table. I've also got my screwdriver set, a spoon, banana, and DVD copy of Guyver 2 ready, and most importantly, my anti-static Christmas jackets. Now this is a Gigabyte Aorus B660 Master DDR4. It's not my first choice, but this is what I've got. It's a motherboard, it doesn't really matter. Though I recommend giving the manual a quick read through just to familiarize yourself with it. At the very least, you can confirm where the RAM sticks need to go. So the first thing in is the CPU. This is an Intel i7-12700K, not the top of the line, not even maxing out my budget, but in terms of value, I think this was a steal at $400. This was the only time I about had a heart attack during this process, as I didn't properly slot the CPU in when I first tried to close the cage thingy, that's what it's called, right? The arm wasn't going down all the way, like it was hitting something, and then I realized, oh crap, it's hitting the CPU! Uh, so I opened up again and, Sure enough, it was slightly misaligned. It was too far up, forward, whatever. 
Um, I thought for sure that with as much pressure as I was putting on it that I had broken the CPU, but I wouldn't know for sure until I finished assembling it and turning it on. So with the CPU correctly installed, I decided to place the CPU fan next, as I thought the RAM sticks would get in the way if I didn't do it now. This is the Be Quiet Pure Rock 2 FX. If you recall from part one, I originally bought the base Pure Rock 2 from Amazon, but the seller scammed me. After posting that video, I ordered this off Newegg. They didn't have the base model, so I had to get the LED one. Eventually, Amazon did give me my money back, by the way, which is nice, but it still cost me a week and ate a lot of headaches. Installation of this was super easy. It comes with three different mounting solutions, one for AMD CPUs and two for Intel. I chose the 1700 one, and yeah, you just screw in the mounting bracket underneath the board, then put the thermal block onto that. Then you clip on the fan, and that's it. I didn't apply any thermal paste because the fan already had some on the bottom of it, which I confirmed by poking at it like an idiot. The only weird thing about this fan is the extra cable that's supposed to sync with your motherboard to control the LED light on it, but that doesn't work on mine, it just stays a constant blue. I'm sure I did something wrong here and it's not the fan of the motherboard, but like I said before, I don't care for LEDs so it doesn't bother me. The RAM was the easiest part of this build. You just take it out of the box and slot it in. You have to make sure you're putting them in the right slots, which the motherboard manual will tell you. I'm using two sticks of G-Skill Ripjaws 32GB, which is 64 gigs total to be clear. That would be overkill for a gaming PC, but this isn't a gaming PC, it's an editing one. This motherboard is dual channel, which means you shouldn't put the sticks next to each other, and for some reason this board says to put the sticks in channel 2 and not 1. I don't know if that's normal, but I thought that was weird. Next up is the memory. In part 1 I fussed over how much capacity to get, ultimately settling on this 1TB Samsung 970 EVO Plus, since I already had a 1TB 860 EVO. Well, since then I decided that was dumb, so I bought a 2TB 970 Plus to act as my main drive, with the 1TB one holding my video files and leaving the 860 out entirely. These are M2 drives, so they both go directly onto the motherboard. First you have to take off the top of the heat shield, and then screw them in with the screws you lost. Can you see the mistake I made here, besides dropping the screws, anyway? Yeah, I forgot to take the plastic film off the heat pads on the bottom of this plate, and I didn't realize that until I had finished the PC and closed it up. That was super fun going back in just for that, let me tell you. So after plugging in the CPU fan and figuring out how I was going to run the cable, it was time to put the motherboard into the case. The hardest part of this was actually seeing where to put the screws in. It's a black case with a black motherboard and black screws in a room with very bad lighting. Also trying not to block the camera didn't help. Nor did the case fan cord at the top, which constantly flopped in my way, so I just taped it to the case temporarily. And with that done, it was time to install my biggest regret of this build. I ended up buying a graphics card, even though I didn't need one. As I said, this is an editing PC, and believe it or not, GPUs aren't really all that important when it comes to video editing. My old T50, T50? 1050 Ti was doing a surprisingly competent job, and I originally planned on keeping that and upgrading further down the line. Except I ran across this EVGA 2060KO one night while browsing eBay for just $200, and I guess I just couldn't help myself. Uh, the seller also had a bunch of other graphics card listed, so they were probably a Bitcoin miner. Um, regardless of the physical quality of this, I do regret getting it. It meant I had to wait another two weeks to get another paycheck to finish, you know, buying the parts that I actually needed, and no, don't disregard the physical quality of the card, because I have no idea how long this thing has been in use or what it's been doing before I bought it. And while it is a big improvement over my 1050 Ti, I could have just waited a couple of months and got a new 2080 or even a 3070 if I really wanted to go crazy. But we are where we are, and I won't be buying a new GPU anytime soon after this, even if this thing does explode in a month. So, uh, let's make the most of it and plug it in, shall we? I don't know why I did that. It plugged in super easy and that was it. I remember on my last PC build with the stupid micro ATX board, there was barely enough room for the 1050 Ti. In fact, it was blocking the CMOS battery and the fan was resting on top of a capacitor. Installing the power supply and trying to get the cables tucked away in the right spot was tricky, so much so that I didn't record any of it. So we're going to jump straight to me turning the PC on for the first time, 
or at least trying to. Yeah, it didn't work. And the reason for that is because the power connector from the power supply to the motherboard didn't work. I ignored the little piece that you're supposed to plug the wires into, which you're then supposed to plug into the ATX connector on the motherboard. Uh, once I used that and got everything plugged in correctly, it booted up no problem. I also didn't record any of that because by this point I was just annoyed. Anyway, following Jay's two cents guide on setting up a PC for the first time, I pretty much ignored the BIOS menu and booted straight into Windows setup, which I put on my USB thumb drive. Yeah, I ended up going with Windows 11 for the OS instead of Linux like I was thinking about. It's just easier, frankly, and I know all the programs I need to use, as well as games, will work without any issue. Maybe for my next PC I'll make the switch, but not this time. And it was a decision I instantly regretted, because apparently nowadays Microsoft requires an internet connection to even start the installation. The computer wouldn't connect to my network. I tried the Wi-Fi antenna that came with the motherboard, a USB Wi-Fi antenna, and plugging my T-Mobile 5G home internet router straight into it, but nope, nothing. So I tried what some call a pro gamer move and turned off the computer and then turned it back on again. Suddenly it picked up the network from the USB antenna, no problem. I thought it was working fine then, so I unplugged that, relying on the wired connection, but then it stopped working again. So for whatever reason, turning off the PC made it recognize the USB Wi-Fi antenna, but not the wired connection or the antenna that came with the motherboard. I'm guessing it was some kind of driver issue maybe, but I don't know. Whatever the case, Windows eventually installed just fine and I was able to finish setting up the software side of things. So here's the um, final cable management um, build. Um, it's actually a little art piece I made. It's, well, I mean, I'm kind of proud of it, honestly. I call it, I don't care, why do you? Yeah, that's, honestly, that's good enough. That's as good as I can get it. Unfortunately, I can't really do anything about this cable right up there, which is where I wanted to put the fan. This cable is just too short. I was going to have it come through this little crack right here with all the other cables. Um, but it was too short, and maybe I could get it through this hole right here, but I'm worried it's too short for one thing, and another unplugging it from this side and plugging, plugging it back in. That was one of the hardest parts of this build, um, because we've got motherboard and whatever that giant heat sink looking thing is supposed to be, like right up in there, plugging those two cables in was actually one of the hardest things of this build, because it was so hard to get my hand down in there and plug those in properly. Okay, that is the side panels back on. I think I'm gonna leave the protective plastic on. I already took it off on the other side, but I'm gonna leave it on this side uh, because I'm 87 years old, I suppose. Um, let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see what it looks like. Not much. Not much, I don't think. Nothing happened, so that's fun. Oh dear. Okay, I took the panel off and tried turning it back on again, and it turned on straight away. I did literally nothing but remove the side panel. So that's interesting. Is it touching up against, like, one of these cables or something? I literally didn't do anything but take that panel off. The one panel. The other panel... I don't know if you can see that there. I didn't touch that one at all. That one's still on there. I just took off this one panel with glass. Um... I'm hitting these wires and nothing's happening. Um, okay. And that was the building process. A couple of hiccups here and there, sure, but overall it was fairly straightforward and easy. It doesn't look like much on paper, but I don't really care. It's, it's not a top of the line powerhouse, but I didn't have the budget for that anyway. Or is it? It's only got a 2060, sure, but the i7-12700K is no joke, nor is the 64 gigs of RAM or the two 960 EVO Plus NVMe sticks. After downloading updates and software and transferring files over from the old PC, which took about three days, by the way, I finally tried editing on here, and I gotta say, it is just incredible. I was kind of worried for some reason that all of this would be for nothing, despite you know, knowing the specs, but to see what it can actually do firsthand has just been incredible. What can it do exactly? Well, first I upgraded to Magic Studio 2023, a huge upgrade over the 2017 version I had been using, and exported some test files. I went straight for the jugular, exporting a 10 minute 4K 60fps video 
and it finished in less than 7 minutes. That would have been impossible on my old PC. Remember that 44 minute 1440p 30fps Asian grocery store video that took 28 hours to export? Well, now I can export that same video at 4K60 in about 17 minutes. Yes, I am using the finished video of 1440p 30fps and not the original footage, but still, that is a massive improvement. Also, I download it from YouTube and they put the shorts logo on it for some reason. Don't understand that. And even though this isn't a gaming PC, it does just fine in that regard. Battlefield 5 runs at 60 FPS at max graphic settings perfectly. It technically can go up to 120 FPS, but it did start to chug a little. Death Stranding looked great and ran super well for the most part. I was able to get that going at max settings and 120 FPS no problem. Well, except one. The clouds were kind of blurry, which is a known issue that I was able to fix, but the real problem is this weird shimmering or flickering effect visible with faraway objects that I couldn't really solve. It didn't seem like anyone else was having this problem. Turning on motion blur helped a little bit, but it's still really annoying to the point where I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to play this on PC. Apex Legends and Genshin Impact, well, honestly I can barely tell a difference. Neither game has ray tracing and they're both capped at 60 FPS and they're both online only games anyway, so uh... Yeah, great choice of comparison there, me. Um... Here's Fallout 4 with some 4K mods. I don't know. Now the moment you have all been waiting for, the final price tag. It actually came in a lot lower than I thought it would. This whole build cost me a little over $1,500. Not bad considering I bought all of the parts, except for the case fans and graphics card, new and didn't reuse any for my last build. I didn't really get lucky on any sales either. I timed my purchase on and around Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but the parts I were after just weren't on sale, unfortunately. I did get half off Magic Studio 23 since I was an existing customer, so... That's nice, I guess. Two months later. I spent a couple of months with it now, and I feel like I know the ins and outs pretty well, so here's how it all turned out. Editing on my old PC was a nightmare, but like all nightmares, it finally ended. This one with dry sheets. Using LibreOffice is a breeze, and I can now fire up Grammarly without dropping a single frame. Oh, look how quickly I write up scripts now. They're still not funny, but with YouTube, it's about quantity over quality, so it doesn't matter. Oh, and I guess video editing is a lot faster now too. I tried exporting that Asian store video at 4K 60fps and it did the job in about 17 minutes. My old computer exported that same video at 2K 30 and it took 28 hours. I am going to mention that in every single video I make going forward because I still cannot believe that. That doesn't really count though, because I was using a downloaded version of the video and not the raw footage. The first real test was that Libble Rabble video I did. Surprising, considering I started work on that video last October, but never mind. At 4K 60fps, this new PC spat that video out in about an hour and a half. A little longer than I had hoped for, but considering my old computer would have caught fire trying that, I'll take that as an absolute win. Aside from the subjective issue of the used graphics card, there is a more tangible issue. And that is, if I can get this thing off here, uh, the fans. They usually don't turn on when I turn the PC on, often, often sputtering before, well they're running now of course, um, often sputtering before stopping entirely or just not even trying to turn on to begin with. I thought I might have wired them up incorrectly, but I downloaded this great free fan control software called Fan Control by R REM0O, uh, and using that I was obviously able to get them to turn on and adjust their speed. So they're definitely powered on and working, and booting up fan control powers them on and they ran no issue. They also really pick up when I start playing games, like a lot. Um, it's just for some reason that as soon as I boot the PC, they just kind of don't really want to do anything. I guess maybe they're supposed to do that, since it's, you know, cold, but um, maybe I should invest in some kind of hardware fan control solution or something, but I, I, I'm really out of my depth here. Maybe some of you can let me know what the issue is.
I mentioned in part one that I bought T-Mobile's 5G home internet and that I had started using it straight away. I gotta say, I love this thing. Also, they're not sponsoring me or anything. My internet speed is a little faster than it was before, but it is so much cheaper now at just $25 a month for unlimited data. I can stream 4K films on Netflix and 4K videos on YouTube and play Genshin Impact and Apex all I want on PC and PS5 with zero problems. I've had no issues with dropping connections or slow speed, and I haven't had any issues with T-Mobile themselves either. There are two small issues though. I cannot for the life of me get Apex Legends running most of the time. Often I'll try to join a game and the connection times out and I get an error code. On rare occasions I'll be able to join a match and it'll work just fine, but probably 9 times out of 10 it just doesn't happen. And it's only Apex. Any other online game I try, like Genshin or Battlefield to find, work perfectly fine. For whatever reason Apex just doesn't like T-Mobile's home internet. Also, apparently Wikipedia has banned anyone using T-Mobile's home internet from creating or even signing into an account. I can't even log in using a VPN. Apparently it's something to do with trolls editing articles or something, but I don't know, banning anyone who uses an entire service seems pretty absurd to me. Speaking of Wikipedia, I absolutely love the dust collectors on my PC. My office slash bedroom is perpetually covered in dust and no matter how hard I try, all I can do is just vacuum and dust the room twice a week to try and keep the dust levels down. This case has three dust filters, this magnetic plastic thing on the top, a mesh screen on the fronts, and another smaller mesh on the bottom. The ones on the top and front are really good at blocking dust. Too good, maybe, as every time I look at them they are just caked in dust and I have to break out the vacuum for fear of clogging the air intakes. And while we're talking about minor issues, this Anchor USB hub sucks. Look at how ridiculously short this cable is. Why is it so short? I was gonna put it on the side of the monitor riser and kind of tuck the wires behind the desk, but no, no, it's on the side of this monitor riser with the cord just hanging out right there in the open. It makes functionally no difference, but I have to look at this stupid cable every day. Sorry starving children, orphaned puppies, but I've got bigger problems to deal with right now. There we go. That's really all there is to say about the new builds. Its job is to edit videos, write scripts and blogs, and browse the internet, and it does all three of those things excellently. I guess that's technically four. Uh, it has a much easier time editing and exporting videos, and that's really all I wanted out of it. As you might be able to tell if you're a loyal Josh Griffith subscriber, <laughs> those don't exist, uh, I've changed up my office quite a bit since building this PC. I moved some bookcases for the sake of better filming angles and because it just looks better, and unlike the inside of the PC itself, I actually bothered with cable management on the outside. I've got all of my cables neatly organized on the back of the desk with these command strips. I've got my Elgato back there as well as the power strip and the Wi-Fi antenna, and I've got these hooks holding up a bunch of cables. I also have these wooden monitor risers to replace the ancient cardboard boxes I was using, and I had to cut one down because it was too tall, but I kind of ended up hacking it to pieces because I don't have power tools. It turns out cutting wood with the handsaw is a lot harder than you'd think it is. Or maybe it's just me. Um, maybe that's what happens when you give tools to nerds, I guess. I don't know. Overall, this PC and the reorganizing of my office was less about radical change and more about quality of life. It hasn't changed my life all that much, but it's made my job much easier and faster. And now that the space is more organized, I actually like being in here. So I guess in a way it kind of has changed my life. It goes to show that even small improvements can have a big impact. Certainly wasn't a small impact to my bank account, that's for sure. Oh, God.